Chris Amundsen, Communications Manager for Education Sector. And I'm here with Bill Tucker, who is the author of a new report called Putting Data into Practice. Bill, talk a little bit about what it was that motivated you to write this new report. Sure. Uh, so uh, data is everywhere. Uh, you hear about education policy. There's almost always a data aspect to the policy. If we had better data about this, we could measure this. Assessments are a form of data. And I think in almost every other field, we see data being used from your shopping card scanner that tells the company what groceries you brought and what quantities and when and how to, um, in, in medicine, an area that I've really studied about how we can use patient records to learn more about what are symptoms of cancer that may not necessarily be um, obvious that could give us early warnings. And so and in education, I think we're putting a lot. The Obama administration and, and the Bush administration before it both have been very consistent supporting the building of state longitudinal databases. You see districts doing all this. But, and I think it's all good, and I think it's, it's important for education to move in this way. But, but the piece that I wanted to look at was, did, did, was the theory complete? So, and it's most simple, you hear that, well, we need better data, data will inform instruction, that'll help our children learn more. Um, but then the policy action to that is, okay, let's build a state longitudinal database, or let's build a data warehouse. And what I wanted to see is, okay, well, well that's great, but how, how does that actually work in helping children to learn more or improving teaching? Like, how, how does that really work out in practice, and can we just stop there? In some ways, the theory is not fully complete. And so that's why I wanted to, to take a look at this subject, do a lot of research in other fields, see how it looked, and ended up really with uh, kind of looking at New York City, our country's biz biggest district, huge um, investment in both data and in cultures of data, wanting to build data, and see how it's going. Great. Um, you know, you talked about moving data into the classroom and um, helping teachers use data. I know a couple of things are a reality. One, for most teachers, they're already pretty crazed and busy. And second, they don't always have access. They, they, they say, look, I produce a lot of information, but I, I don't get it back. What do you mean about how are teachers going to be able to use this information to inform instruction? Well, I think those are the issues that, that were really, you know, kind of the, the gaps in sort of theory and practice, right? Mm -hmm. the, the conception that we can just build this big data warehouse and all of a sudden teachers will magically wake up the next day <laughs> and teach better and, and children will learn better is, is false, right? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that have to happen in between. Um, one of those is to recognize that, just as you said, teachers are already awash in tons of information. And good teachers use information. I mean, teachers always want more information about the students that they're teaching. Um, all information is not the same, right? So the data from the state assessment, data on your English language learner status, your, your parents, uh, what's your parents' cell number so I can call, uh, call your father <laughs> if there's a problem in class. Uh, all these things are pieces of information. Um, so, so the paper really tries to look at, okay, well, how does this fit together and how can we do this in a way that will not add to that pile, but be really useful te for teachers? What really helps in, in daily practice? And I, I think what we found is New York's learned a lot along the way. They made a lot of assumptions, um, some good, some bad, and they've gotten a lot of feedback along the way. One thing they've learned is that, um, and one of the pieces in the, in the paper talks about information that moves. Um, Information that's static, you might go to one time, so it might be helpful when you have a new transfer student to be able to look at their, their history and their trajectory to sort of know where, where they stand from an a academic standpoint. But are, are you gonna come back to that in two months if that information hasn't changed? The, the information that changes is generally in a teacher's classroom. And so how, you know, one of the big challenges, how do we integrate the big data, like the accountability data and stuff like that, and all sorts of status data and all sorts of things that could be helpful in with the information that teachers use on a day-to-day day day day. How do we make that easy? How do we um, allow that information to be shared across classrooms, right? So this is a team endeavor, not just a, a solo practice. And then how do, how, do we, um, how do we make new insights out of that data? So just like 
in, in the medical field where we're putting together information about individual patient records with crossing it with other data and we're learning new things about what again what might cause cancer that we didn't know before wasn't easily observable how can we take information maybe about grades putting it together with uh, in New York example scores on the Regents tests uh, tests that high school students take with maybe there are four other things that we can't even think about and maybe if we put those together we learn something about what might happen great if you were to be um, advising a school district or a local even school about two or three important things they could do that could make it easier and more effective to put uh, to, to create one of these data systems. Um, what would be your two or three big takeaways, your two or three big pieces of advice? Yeah, so the first gets to your question. I would say the goal is not to create a data system. Right. The goal is to help inform and improve teaching mm -hmm. and inform and improve practice, which means the scope of what you have to do is much larger, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, you know, just thinking like if, if the goal is just to build a data warehouse, that, that's not too hard, we have technology, we can do that, but that's not gonna change teaching. Mm -hmm. um, that said, I think data has, could, could, has the potential to be very important. But if you think about that larger goal, that means that you can't do it without involving teachers, without getting a lot of feedback in the design to make sure it hits on all those issues that you talked about. Right? Is this gonna be useful in my daily practice? Is this actually, how do, how, do, how do we think about information? How is information shared? What's the context in which this happens? Um, I think the other thing that you want to think about, and, and again, this is coming from the New York example, is how you're flexible enough to allow the tools or the system to grow over time. Because what will happen is, is as it gets used, you'll learn more. Oh, more, it'll always be, oh, we want this information in. How do you accomplish that? Another thing that found is, is, is uh, so in New York, high schools, it's, it's a different context in high school maybe it is an elementary school, and so there needs to be something a little specialized for high school. So again, it needs to have that sort of, um, sort of a consistent spine that, uh, so there's information that you want everyone to have and everyone to have access to, and some consistency and some comparable information across schools, so you can say, hey, how, how does, how am I dealing with this demographic? Maybe a school across town is doing it a certain way, I can learn from them. But then you also want to be able to have this adaptive ability so that we can, while these tools are really important in high school, uh, it's not so rigid that we can't add those in. Um, that, that other part is really important because what happens to any of us is as we begin to use data, we get more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. And the questions that we ask get more sophisticated and more precise. I mean, data is just a way to help us do this inquiry. It doesn't, you know, we're not going to get a number spit out and it'll tell you exactly how to teach. That might Maybe it would make it easier, but it's not going to work that way. But what we can do is have a cycle. And so if you build a system and just think that it has to stay the same, and you're not involving the actual thinking about how it's actually going to get used and evolve over time, and, and as things get increasingly digital, bringing in more and, and different information into that system, you're, you're going to get, it, it won't fulfill its potential. We want something that can grow, and this is new. So we're going to need to adapt over time. Again, the report is Putting Data into Practice, and you can download it at um, our website.